I was recently out with my non-watch nerd friends. And yes, I do have friends, despite what everyone says. But we were catching up. And one of my friends was telling me he's just started his first proper job. He's making a little bit more money and he wants to buy a luxury watch. So he was wondering what I would recommend to him. And then I thought, this is an entire video. I did tell him my answer as, as well. I, I'm not gonna make him watch the video for my answer, but I thought this is an entire video concept. So I'm gonna keep the budget between 500 pounds and 3000 pounds. I think that's a good starting place. And I know that is a huge range, but each person has a different budget. What's expensive to one person might be right on budget, right on target for another. But when we're talking about the world of luxury watches, this is a pretty good starting place. Is there a better starting place than Seiko? For so many watch collectors, their first nicer watch they ever bought was a Seiko. And I don't think there's another brand that has been more of a gateway drug into this crazy hobby. I know for watch geeks, we like the sportier models. We like the SKX and the divers. But for a first luxury watch, I'd recommend something a little bit more classic. For something a bit more budget friendly, I'd recommend the Presage Cocktail Time. It has all those staples of Seiko, incredible dial, mechanical, automatic movement for about 400 pounds to 500 pounds, depending on which model you like the most. If you have a slightly more punchy budget, more around the 1000 pound price point, you need to look into the Presage Craftsmanship series. This is higher end Seiko with those little nods to the upper end of the Seiko family like Grand Seiko and Credor. I'd get the pure white enamel Presage. It is so good looking but there's a few options you can go for. Longines is a brand that I love for a first luxury watch. It has that name brand recognition, heritage, and a beautiful range of timepieces. For something quite dressy, the Dolce Vita, all day, every day, Cartier tank vibes, classic, great looking watch, starting at 1,300 pounds. For something a bit more middle of the road, go anywhere, do anything, the Conquest. The specific model I like the most, the automatic 38 millimeters, is a bit more expensive at 2000 pounds, but there are loads more you can look into if you are a bit more budget conscious, which is honestly understandable as well. Like 2000 pounds is a ridiculous amount of money to spend on a watch. What is wrong with us watch geeks? <laughs> Hamilton is another brand, like Longines, that I love recommending for a first luxury watch purchase. You're getting that name brand power, brand heritage, and some real bang for buck in their catalog. Oh god, I hate myself for saying bang for buck. Ugh. I'm a watch influencer. I say bang for buck. <laughs> for something sporty, and I'd say the best value proposition in their catalog, the Khaki Field Mechanical. Field watch, available in a few variations, and absolutely no watch geek is going to argue with this one. If you're after something a little bit more classic, I think the Murph is one of the best sub 1000 pound watches you can buy. Really classic, clean, cathedral hands, automatic movement, available in 38 millimeters and 42 millimeters. And you can spot this one in Interstellar, which is extra cool. Number four, it's Christopher Ward. Okay, I am a massive Christopher Ward fan, so of course they were gonna make this list. This is more of a thinking man's choice, less of a mainstream brand, and more of an informed decision. The only choice, if you ask me, is the 12. This is one of their biggest releases of the last couple years. Sporty, but you can still wear it under a dress cuff. Integrated bracelet, cool dial, available in stainless steel, and titanium. I have one of these, the 36 millimeters in blue. Bloody love it. Easy to wear, easy to choose. I wear it all the time. Another brand I'm a massive fan of, Namos. Of course they were gonna be on this list. My first ever mechanical watch was actually the Namos Tonganta Sport Hadinki Limited Edition. So I will forever have a soft spot in my heart for them. One thing I don't think people fully understand about Namos is that they sell the most watches in Glashütte. So of all the fabulous German watch brands, no one sells a higher volume than Namos. I think sometimes we think of them as a smaller brand, but they really aren't. Keeping it on budget, I would recommend either the Club or the Tonganta. The Club is their more sporty offering, while the Tonganta is as classic Namos as it gets. 
One big thing with NAMOS is we're now in the realm of in-house movements, which for some people is a big deal. Moving on to a brand I should really talk about more than I do because we're based in the same city, Fears. Fears was first established in Bristol, England in 1846, and the company today is still owned and run by the founding family, with Nicholas Bowman Scargill reviving the brand in 2016. For an entry point into Fears, I would have said the Edwin edition of the Red Cliff, which was just under 600 pounds, but those sold out dang fast. So now my personal recommend would still be a Red Cliff, 39 and a half millimeters, go anywhere, do anything, but it is ever so slightly over budget at 3,150 pounds, but worth it. Now Tag is one of the best first luxury watches you can buy. Once again, it has that name brand power recognition, if that's something that's important to you, and dang great history. Keeping things on budget, my top recommendation would be a Carrera Date. This is so classic looking. I love it on the leather strap, but also available on the bracelet. Available in a few different sizes and colors. Mwah! Chef kiss. They're so good. But another watch I have to mention is the Aqua Racer. You can get an Aqua Racer Professional 200 for £2,600. Great wear, automatic movement. But I've also got a weird soft spot for the Professional 200 Solar Graph, which is a solar powered quartz watch. Uh, why would you even get a quartz watch? <laughs> why, why would you even do it? I have so many quartz watches that I love. In fact, I am wearing a quartz tag heuer right now. I love that ice blue hand on the solar graph and the titanium version of these particularly. Oh, they look so good. Okay, for these last two, this is where things are going to get a little bit cheeky because we are going to go ever so slightly over budget for these. But this is because when I recommended a lot of these to my friend, he still wanted a bit more brand power. He was happy with tag, but then he got quite excited when I brought up Cartier. Brand name power isn't for everyone. Some people want to make more of an informed decision, get more, you know, value for their money. Whereas some people want to be able to say, Frick yeah, look at my Cartier. And neither is right or wrong. It takes all kinds of kinds. So if you go just a tiny bit over budget for 3,300 pounds, you can get a large Cartier Tank Moust. These will be quartz, but it's just a little two-hander, so really, who cares? You can get the Solar Beat or the Classic Quartz, although I should say the Solar model isn't the easiest to get. You can also, for the same price, get one of the funky color tanks. So whether you want something classic or funky, you've got options. And the final brand we're breaking the budget with, Tudor. If you follow my channel, you know Tudor is one of my all-time favorite brands, and that is because of the bang for buck they deliver. I, no, I said bang for buck again, no. <laughs> but honestly, what you get for the money is fantastic. The Tudor catalog in general is quite sporty, but for a go anywhere, do anything offering, the Black Bay fixed bezel all day, every day. For the 36 millimeter variation, it retails for 3,360 pounds, which is slightly over budget, but the larger versions also come with a larger price tag. So the 39 millimeters is 3,450 pounds and the 41 millimeters is 3,540 pounds. Right, I think that's a pretty good list of first luxury watches. But you know, I'd love to hear in those comments down below, did I miss anything big? Anything obvious, anything awesome, drop it in those comments. And you never know, there could be people looking for their first luxury watch who find the right one because of your comment. If you're looking for your first luxury watch, I always recommend go out shopping for a day, go out watch shopping for a day, try a bunch of different things on. See what suits your style, see what speaks to you. You might even be surprised by what takes your eye. Do all that YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, and now we're gonna thank the gorgeous, fabulous, wonderful Pope to your patrons. Hello, people who have made it all the way to the end of the video. Um, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to all the names on the screen. Uh, I think most of you, well, not most, I don't know if people know. I'm on maternity leave right now. I've, I'm filming this. Um, very, very pregnant. Good grief. That is a big lady. Um, 
So if there's any Pope Tier patrons who are newer, your name's not on the screen, I'm so sorry. When I get back from maternity leave, only a few months, I'll get your name included on there. I'm so sorry. Um, thank you so much for supporting my channel. You're all amazing. Thank you all to your patrons. Mwah, 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 mwah.